Before we get into this video, I'd like to take exactly a minute so you know how far you need to skip through the video to ignore this bit. Uh, just to thank you guys so much for helping me hit 500 subscribers on my YouTube channel. It means so much to me. Honestly, I think at the start or the end of 2018, even, we had like 150 subs. So to be at this point where I'm over 500 subs is just insane. So much that I'd like to kind of do a thank you let's play of any odd game in front I'm just gonna throw like maybe eight or nine just games that I'm in the mood for playing and I'm looking for an excuse so if any of those games interest you I'll have a look at it obviously I have quite a few games in my steam inventory and you know on other platforms so if you just comment them I'll probably consider giving one of them a go to play if no one bothers to comment I'll probably just can out and go with something in oblivion or Skyrim but yeah thank you so much and let's get into the actual video you're here to see Hey guys, Dom here, and today I thought for this custom card video, I'd do something which you might not have expected. It was what was meant to be an expansion for. See, I went out and thought, you know what, I'll ask, see if I can find out what this expansion was meant to be, and apparently it didn't actually get that far into development, but they planned to look further into Oblivion, so I thought, you know, I'll make some cards which kind of also theme with Oblivion and Daedric Cults, and the keyword I've come up with is sacrifice, which is destroy another creature to activate this effect. So it's a bit like betray, but um, it's usually on creatures, and it's just to activate the effect in the first place. It is something you can just cancel and not use, but it's one of those things where you get nothing if you just don't use it. So it's kind of really heavily reinforced that you probably should. And with the cards that they're on, they are very heavily made for that effect in their own little mini archetype, but let's show you the cards. Okay, so the first thing I thought I'd do was make some endurance cards for Daedra so you could play Invade with endurance properly, as I don't feel like there's enough Daedric cards in endurance, and I just said Daedric and endurance way too many times, <laughs> I apologise. So, to continue that trend, we're going to start with the Forkos Dremora Bornkine. I really need to stop taking uh, words off unofficial Order Scrolls pages. And that is a 2-5 Prophecy Guard, which has the ability your opponent can't target Oblivion Gates with actions. So this is basically your Defender of the Gates, but in a kind of different way to kind of make you think, yeah, I want Endurance in my Invade deck. And then something else is the 6 cost Lesser Iron Atronach, which is 5-5 five, five Breakthrough Guard. Your opponent cannot target this card of actions, so it makes a great physical creature guard for your Oblivion Gates, so they don't just siege it and destroy it completely. So, what the theme of the Dremora slash Daedra cards in Endurance, yeah, I'm saying them again, um, is that they're quite defensive cards. So, they're ones that you'd use just to stop your opponent from messing about with your synergy. And I think it'd be pretty cool to kind of have this extra way that you could play with your Invade cards, because, as I know, everyone loves Invade. It's definitely the most popular of all the magic words in Elder Scrolls Legends. Like for sarcasm. Right, moving on, we have the Demented Widow, a 4 cost 2 2 with Invade, then summon Demented Spiderlings up to the level of your Oblivion Gate. So this would cause your Oblivion Gate, if you didn't have any, to become a level 1 card, and then that will spawn one Demented Spiderling. It does mean if you've got an empty board except your Oblivion Gate and you get it to level 6 or higher, this is going to flood the board with a bunch of Daedra with a ton of keywords. So it's pretty crazy in that retrospect, but obviously you're usually going to have a couple of cards on the board and you're not going to be like, oh I need to get rid of these so I can fill it with Demented Spiderlings, those 0-1 power cards, but it's just so this actual endurance side of Daedra have some form of swarm. Okay, as this would be a full expansion, I don't want to just sit on endurance for Daedra cards, so I'm also going to show off a Guild Sworn one, which is Catif Swordmaster, and this is because I feel like these three attributes are the most common ones with any sort of invade deck, and something like this would be quite useful for it. It's a 7 cost, 6 for summon, gain keywords up to the number of other friendly units you have in this lane. So this would kind of go with the Dramora card in Intelligence, which invades every time that, you know, 
a card of yours gains a keyword, and then there's the one that gets like all the keywords of monsters you have. It's just really cool synergy which goes together. And I feel like if it's in a guild sworn deck, it kind of makes it slightly nerfed as well because your deck has to be bigger than usual. So overall, I think this is quite powerful and might need like maybe a strength nerf, but other than that, it's just a cool card. Once again, we're now moving on to the kind of cultist cards, which are kind of like a neutral sort of archetype almost that I've made uh, just to kind of go alongside Daedra. And this is what all the sacrifice cards come into. And the first one is Molag Bow Cultist, a two cost, three at one. With Divinity Sacrifice, the chosen creature attacks all opposing guards in this lane. This is basically just a way of really kind of showing more of an aggressive stance at your opponent. And if you've got like a really kind of piss poor unit that you just want to get rid of but could destroy all your opponent's guards, you throw this at it. Or if that card's got lethal, well, you can pretty much just get a clean shot at your opponent using this. The reason why I made it only guards is just so if you have a lethal unit on your side, it's not too broken. And because it's this restricted, it might be that card that you have in your deck, but not always use, like ones I say, Dismantle, for instance. Right, now we have the Daedric Assassin, a 4 cost 1 6, which has lethal. Sacrifice, battle an enemy creature if the creatures if this creature survives, not the opponent cre opposing creature, this is lethal, that would be incredibly rare to happen. Invade. This is so you can kind of see the kind of tagging alongside with Daedra cards in full action here. And it's also a nice way of just you lose a card, but your opponent will nine times out of ten, unless they've got a ward or a card immune to lethal, also lose a monster. And, as a bonus, if you keep this quite chunky health unit, you get to invade, so all your units will get slightly stronger and give your opponent something else to focus on. Obviously, as it has got a large health pool, if it goes up against something weak, it does become quite the issue for your opponent as well. Okay, so next we have the Daedric Acolyte, which has Sacrifice. Draw a Daedra with equal or less power than the Sacrifice creature. This is so, say, you've got maybe a free power unit, or free attack, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can get rid of it and then draw maybe a Daedra, which will help you a lot more in that situation. Say that card's outlived its purpose, you've now got something else in its place. This is also kind of a way of just get, getting through your deck almost, finding what you want and filling it down so you can get to your stronger cards a lot easier and have a better probability of drawing them. It's kind of weird. Strange card. I was going to make it cost... But then I thought, you're never really going to use it on anything like maybe over 5 power, just because those units are quite valued. Now finally, we have Daedric Priestess, a 6 cost 3-4 with a bloody long effect. So, let's get going. Okay, so when this card is summoned, it will fill the lane with Daedric Worshippers, and at the end of your turn, it will sacrifice one of them, uh, and it will also invade and summon a scamp in its place. Daedric Worshippers are 1 cost, 0 2 guards, which when they are sacrificed or betrayed, deals 1 damage. This card is made to be excellent for the sacrifice mechanic, or even a betray deck. And I feel like something like this in the game would really kind of make decks like that a lot more, well, stronger, and like threaten your opponent, because it will have a good, consistent form of swarming and damaging your opponent at the same time. Kind of putting on a lot of pressure. And yeah, I feel like this would be really cool. Maybe a bit powerful. But you never know. One piercing javelin's all it takes to take out this priestess. But that's pretty much going to wrap up this video. If you've enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Give me some ideas on some other custom archetypes to make. And I'll see you next time.